When we hear the title Reichsführer SS, we often think immediately of Heinrich Himmler, who held this powerful position for an astonishing 16 years and 113 days, from his appointment in 1929 until April 1945. However, Himmler was not the sole individual to serve as Reichsführer SS. In fact, five men would hold this prestigious position from its inception in April 1925, until its dissolution in May 1945. In this video, we will focus on the last incumbent who held this influential role for only nine days. Meanwhile, Adolf Hitler was hunkered down in his Berlin bunker, surrounded by the relentless Soviet Red Army forces steadily advancing towards him. Furious that Himmler had seemingly betrayed him, Hitler ordered Himmler's arrest. At that time, Himmler was in northern Germany, having established a new headquarters close to Grand Admiral Karl Donitz, who was soon to become the new Reich government leader, as Germany had been split in two by the US and Soviet forces meeting at the Elbe River. Himmler had approximately 125 followers with him at this time, including his personal staff, an escort unit from the Order Police, SS bodyguards, valets, drivers, and more. Astonishingly, no one came to arrest him, and Donitz continued to hold situation meetings with him in his office for the next few days. On the day after Himmler's treachery became known to Hitler, the final scene in the bunker began. Hitler was making preparations to end his life, but also ensure the continuity of the government following his demise. To this end, Hitler dictated his last will and testament, with copies to be sent out of besieged Berlin to the northern and southern military commanders. In the second part of Hitler's political testament, he expels Heinrich Himmler from the party and from all offices of state. In his stead, Hitler appoints Gauleiter Karl Henk as Reichsführer SS and chief of the German police, with Gauleiter Paul Giesler as Reich Minister of the Interior. This decision was dated the 29th of April, 1945. The choice of Karl Henk to take over what remained of the SS was intriguing. When Hitler dictated his last testament, Henk was conducting the defense of the city of Breslau, which was surrounded by Soviet forces. Breslau, located in Lower Silesia, which is now in Poland, had been encircled since 13 February 1945. Hitler had named Karl Henk the city's battle commandant, and it was his responsibility to hold the city which tied down tens of thousands of Red Army troops that could have been used more productively elsewhere. Henk had joined the NSDAP in 1928, and worked his way up to become personal adjutant to Dr. Joseph Goebbels at the Propaganda Ministry. In 1934, Himmler secured Henk a commission as an honorary SS officer, but Henk's loyalties were divided between Goebbels and Himmler, as the two leaders actively disliked each other. Hank's career at the propaganda ministry took a downturn when his affair with Goebbels's wife, Magda, came to light. This affair was seen as revenge for Goebbels's long-standing affair with actress Lida Barova. In 1939, Hank volunteered for the army as a panzer officer, serving in the invasion of Poland. He then served under General Erwin Rommel during the Battle of France. Rommel had a good relationship with Dr. Goebbels and recommended Hank for the Knight's Cross. However, when Rommel learned of Henk's private criticisms, he withdrew the Knight's Cross application. In 1941, Hitler appointed Henk Gauleiter of Lower Silesia and promoted him to the rank of SS Gruppenführer, or general in the Algemeemain SS. Henk's rule of Lower Silesia was brutal, earning him the nickname, the Hangman of Breslau, for ordering the executions of over a thousand people during his time in office. Though Henk and the military commanders defended Breslau for months, it came at a high cost, with 30,000 soldiers and civilians killed or injured and the city reduced to ruins. Hitler was so pleased with Henk's efforts that on 21 April 1945, he awarded him the highest Nazi party honor, the German Order. However, Henk had no intention of going down with the sinking ship. Hitler died on 30 April and Berlin fell on 2 May 1945. Breslau, on the other hand, held out for several more days. Henk did not learn of his new appointment as Reichsführer SS until the 5th of May, due to the poor communications in the Reich at the time. On this day, the man who had exhorted Breslau to hold fast and fight to the bitter end fled shortly before the city surrender. Unbeknownst to most, Henk had a small spotter plane, a Fiesler Fee 156 Storch, hidden on a temporary airfield in the city center. 
On the afternoon of the 5th of May, Heinck boarded the plane and was flown out of the burning city, over Soviet lines, to Prague, which was still under German control. He left behind the remaining soldiers and civilians to the mercy of the Red Army. Gone was his fancy Gauleiter's uniform. Instead, Heinck turned up at the headquarters of the 18th SS Volunteer Panzergrenadier Division, Horst Wessel, in a private's uniform. The unit attempted to fight its way out of Czechoslovakia to Germany, but on the 6th of May, they surrendered at Neudorf. Heinck was taken prisoner by the Czechs, but for now, his disguise worked, and he wasn't identified. He was thrown into a rudimentary prison camp alongside other SS enlisted men. However, many of his colleagues knew his identity, and Heinck knew that his secret wouldn't remain hidden for long. Different versions exist regarding Heinck's demise. The most likely scenario is that in early June 1945, the Czechs decided to move Heinck's group, numbering 65 men, to another location. While marching on foot, the column was passed by a train, and several POWs, including Hank, made a break for it, clambering onto the fast-accelerating train. Guards opened fire, and Hank and two other SS men fell wounded from the train. Czech guards rushed over and finished them off with blows from their rifle butts, not knowing they had the 41-year-old hangman of Breslau in their custody. Karl Hank's tenure as Reichsführer SS lasted just nine tumultuous days during the final throes of the Third Reich making it the shortest time in office of any Reichsführer in the post's 20-year existence. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you can find details on how to support my channels through PayPal and Patreon in the description box below.